بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان احسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار today's lesson we're looking at chapter 17 in kitab at-tawhid which is titled bab al-shifa'a bab al-shifa'a chapter on intercession and this is quite a lengthy chapter, so inshallah we'll probably take two or three lessons to uh, cover the uh, contents. And Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, before looking at the actual texts that Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab has brought under this chapter heading, uh, Sheikh Al Islam brings a series of verses uh, under this chapter heading. But before that, Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, he gives an introduction to the uh, subject before entering into an explanation of the verses. So he says that Sheikh Al Imam, uh, meaning Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, he said, Babu Shafa'a, chapter on, on intercession. And intercession or Ash Shafa'a, its meaning is what it means is when someone. Um, Intermediate a word we can use is is intermediates or he mediates uh, on behalf of someone in fulfilling his need. Right, so a person he mediates on behalf of one person with another because that other person is able to fulfill that need of the, of of the former of of of, of the first uh, first person. Uh, so. This is the re the reason why a shifa'a has been given the name the name that it, that it is, is because when a person alone by himself seeks something from someone, he is individual. He's one. Right? He he is like an odd person. He's just one person. However, when you add to that another person who now mediates on his behalf. In essence, now you've got two people. You've got two people, and this is why it becomes, uh, as 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 the, as, as the Sheikh says, um, shafan. You know, the, it now becomes even because a shafa here is the opposite of al witr which is odd. Right? So now it goes from an odd number, which is obviously one in this case, to now something which is even, and the Sheikh says so. Therefore. When, when one person who seeks the need came by himself, he was, he was one. And then one this, when this mediator was added to, added to him, it now becomes uh, an even number. And this is the meaning of a shafa and, and, and so therefore, uh, a shafi this is why it's been called a shafi because one who comes along to help another person to acquire his need or his whatever his objective is from someone else, and um, this action as a whole is what is called shafa'a. That is the meaning of shafa'a then, in a, in a nutshell. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَنْ يَشْفَعْ شَفَاعَةً حَسَنَةً يَكُنْ لَهُ نَسِيبٌ مِنْهَا وَمَنْ يَشْفَعْ شَفَاعَةً سَيِّئَةً يَكُنْ لَهُ كِفْلٌ مِنْهَا That whoever intercedes with a good intercession, then he will have a share thereof. And whoever intercedes with an evil intercession, then he will have a burden thereof so therefore a person who intercedes with for example the kings or the rulers or with the rich people or any other people besides them right so he intercedes with them he mediates with them in order to help to fulfill the needs of those who are in need then his action is considered to be a good intercession and he is rewarded for it as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam says as the shaykh quotes Ishfa'u uh, tu'jaru that if you intercede then you will be rewarded. And Allah wa yaqdi Allahu ala lisani rasulihi masha that Allah 
decrees or determines on the tongue of his messenger whatever he wills. So as for when the shifa'a is in something which is haram, so this first example is, is, is an example of good shifa'a. As for when the shifa'a is for something which is haram, then this is an evil intercession. Like for example, the Sheikh illustrates, someone goes to the ruler and he mediates with him in order to abolish the establishment of the hudud, the prescribed punishments. So for example, when it becomes established that a prescribed punishment is due upon an individual, this person then goes and tries to intercede with the ruler in order to, in order to remove this prescribed punishment from him. This is what's called, this is an evil intercession. And for this reason, when it became in the time of the Prophet وسلم, when the had was established upon the wife or upon a woman from Bani Makhzum uh, during the time of the Prophet Ali um, the this and the, 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 the this was a woman who the, the tribe generally you know they, they, they liked. She was quite a prominent figure in the tribe, and you know they enjoyed her uh, company and whatever else it was. And they, they, it became very hard upon the people of this tribe and, you know, this issue of having a hand cut off. So then they went to try to find someone who they believed would be able to intercede with the Prophet wasallam. And after discussion and consultation, eventually they agreed that they should ask Osama bin Zaid radiallahu anhu. And he was obviously someone who was beloved to the uh, Messenger of Allah wasallam, and also the son of someone else who is beloved to the messenger, which is, uh, you know, someone else to whom, who, who is beloved to the messenger, Ali as well. So they went to him for these reasons, and asked him to intercede with the, on on behalf of this woman with the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to try to get this abandonment of of of, of the punishment being established. So Osama spoke to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so he became very, very angry. The Prophet became very, very angry, extremely angry, severely angry. And, you know, he became very angry at Osama. And he said, are you trying to intercede regarding one of the had, meaning one of the prescribed punishments of the hudud of Allah? Then he swore by Allah that even if Fatima bint Muhammad was to steal, then I would have cut off her hand. And in another hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that when the hudud reaches the sultan, meaning that when the affair, when, when an affair in which a prescribed punishment is to be applied, now reaches the, 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 the sultan, meaning it's now reached, it's now been escalated to the level where it now becomes binding upon the ruler to establish uh, the had, then may, then may Allah curse the shafi' and the mushafi', the, the one who intercedes and, sorry, and mushafi' and the one who is interceded for, and the one who is interceded uh, for. And so in essence, the Shaykh says that when we speak of shafa'a from this angle, and when we divide it into a shafa'a which is good and a shafa'a, shafa'a which is evil, then this is as it relates between the people. So far, this is as it relates between the people in the dealings between the people. However, what is intended in this chapter, in this chapter, is the shafa'a as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning interceding with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever has been discussed so far is in relation to, um, and likewise the ayah that was quoted, all of that is in relation to shafa'a between the people. So what is meant by the author, what is meant by the author by this chapter is that the mushrikun, the pagans of the ancient times, and likewise the modern time, the contemporary times, they worship other things besides Allah, they worship idols, they worship trees, they worship stones, they worship graves and tombs and righteous people and the, 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 the awliya, the pious friends of Allah and the angels and even the, the prophets. So when they, when they are engaged in this action and then somebody shows rejection against them, they say, Allah." That those things or those people, they are our interceders or our intercessors with Allah. And then they say, they explain that we know that they are created, we know that the affair is in the hand of Allah, we know that the, we know that these people, they basically have a position and a status with Allah. So all we want from them is that they intercede on our behalf with Allah. And as a result of this belief, they then 
make various offerings and sacrifices like the sacrifice animals for the awliya and the righteous and for the trees and for the stones and also they seek rescue by way of them and they direct a variety of types of worship towards them and so then when someone shows rejection against them they say that we've only presented this to them we've only directed these affairs to them because we want their shafa'a and nothing else and with respect to this action, Allah clarified that this action here is in fact shirk and that this is worshipping other than Allah and so therefore Allah said وَيَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعُهُمْ وَيَقُولُونَ هَا أُولَاءِ شُفَعَاءُنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ That they worship besides Allah that which neither can neither harm them nor bring them any benefit and then they say these are our intercessors with Allah. So they say and they admit that we know that they are created beings and we know that they don't, they don't control anything of the affairs but we've only done this for the reason that we want them to intercede on our behalf with Allah because they have a status and a position with Allah and in another verse Allah says وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاء meaning uh, those who take uh, those besides him as protectors meaning those whom they worship besides Allah مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُكَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي مَا هُمْ فِيهِ يَخْتَلِفُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَحْدِي مَنْ هُوَ كَاذِبًا كَفَّارٌ كَاذِبٌ كَفَّارٌ That we do not worship them. So even they themselves admit and know that they are worshipping these things besides Allah. So they, they acknowledge that. Except that they may bring us closer to Allah. And verily Allah will indeed judge between them in that in which they differed amongst themselves and verily Allah does not guide the one who is a liar and who is a ungrate or ingrate ungrateful person so Allah in this ayah when you look at this verse a number of things first of all they acknowledge that what they are doing is worshipping secondly they explain the reason why they want why they're doing this is because they want to be near to Allah and thirdly Allah described this as a lie because at the end he said, in Allah la yahdi man huwa kathibun kafar. So Allah doesn't guide the one who is a liar and an ungrate. So Allah described this action of theirs, he labeled it as a, a lie, a kathib, this is a lie. And he also described it as kufr. And you know these, these excuses that they make will not benefit them. And the reason why they've actually made these excuses, the reason why they've justified their action in this manner, where they say that these are, have a position with Allah and we want to seek the intercession, is because in essence they have analogized between the Creator with the kings of the world. They, they've made an analog, a false analogy between Allah and the, the kings of this world. So just like we know that from the habits of the people is, with respect to the kings of the world, is that the, you know, the kings have like mediators and intermediaries between themselves and between their subjects and these intermediaries or if you like ministers they are there to bring the affairs of the people to them and to speak for the needs of the people um, so when this is a case regarding the kings of this world then these people, these mushrikun have analogized between these kings and how it is with them and between Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically they've, they've, they've compared Allah to his creation and they've analogized Allah with his creation. So they took therefore intercessors with Allah just like they do with the kings of this world. And this is batil, this is false because we know that to equate or to liken the creator with the created um, then this is, this, this is not correct. Um, and the Shaykh explains that the kings of the world are if you like the leaders of the people in this world the reason why they accept the shifa'a is because you know because they are in a need of that they basically are in a need of that and the reason is because the kings of this world in order for them to operate they need the likes of these ministers they need these uh, advisors who help them who basically help the king in the affairs of his dominion meaning ruling over his flock and, and his people and if he wasn't to accept their advice and their intercession and their mediation then they would have actually fled from him like his ministers and his consultants and advisors and whatever they would have fled from him and they, would, they wouldn't really have aided him or supported him and in reality 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, you know, is not like this at all. He's not in need of his creation. He's not in need of his creation. He's not in need of people from his creation to support him and to aid him and to consult with him and so on and so forth. This is unlike the kings of this world and the, you know, the, 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 the rules of, the, of this world who are, in, who are in fact in need of that type of affair. They are in need of ministers, they are in need of uh, consultants and advisors for a variety of different reasons. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing is that likewise the kings of the world do not, uh, don't, don't actually know the specific circumstances of all of their people, of their flock. They are, they are in need of again ministers and bodies and consultants and advisors and whatever to help them to realize the needs of the people and likewise the condition of the people that they are in. So when these uh, people uh, come to him, like the, the intermediaries and the intercessors and so on and so forth, then they inform these kings what they didn't used to know previously about their people whom they are ruling over. And likewise, Allah is, this, this is totally different as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah knows every single thing. Nothing is hidden from him from the condition of his servants. He knows those who are in need, he knows those who are ill, he knows who are those who are destitute and in need, he knows the people of, of, of want, he knows all of that. He knows it without anyone having to inform him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, this is a second angle to show that it's not possible to analogize between Allah and his creation. Allah, Allah can't be compared and Allah can't be ascribed with the deficiencies that are found within his creation. A third, thing, a third angle as well is that the kings of the world and the leaders, even if they were to know the situation of the people, then they, wouldn't, they still wouldn't incline towards them and incline towards fulfilling their needs. Obviously, in, in the majority of cases, this is, this is so, um, with the majority of the kings. And however, it's only when these people come, these intermediaries, these mediators, these interceders, um, intercessors, and you know they come and they speak to, 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 to the kings and they try to affect them, then it's only, it's only then that they accept this intercession and they decide to do something. Right? As it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah the mighty majestic, then no one can come and influence or affect him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he desires mercy for his servants. He's the one who desires mercy for his servants. He's the one who desires forgiveness for his servants. He's the one who desires fulfilling the needs of the people and giving to them and sustaining them. You know, he is someone who actually desires and wants that. Um, subhanahu wa ta'ala, without anyone actually influencing, influencing or, you know, uh, affecting uh, him on that. And this is a third angle from which Allah is different to the creation. So from all of these angles, we can see that uh, Allah cannot be compared or analogized uh, with his creation. And so this analogy that, that is made by these mushrikun itself is batil from these angles. It's false. It's, it's, it's false. And so therefore the shirk is batil and false. So the shaykh after this, he then summarizes, he says that therefore there is a difference between the creator and the creation, there's a difference between the creator and the creation uh, from all of these angles, from the angle firstly of that Allah is not in need of the aid or the help of any interceder. Allah doesn't need that, Allah doesn't operate in that way. Allah doesn't need um, these, Allah doesn't need the likes of these things which are needed by the kings to have these people around them um, and to, to help them. To help them. Allah is not in need of that. Secondly, that Allah, from the angle that Allah is all-knowing, He's not in need of anyone to come and tell Him what the situation of His of His creation is, and you know their need, the, the fact that they are in need or in want or whatever. Allah is not in need of that at, at all. And thirdly, from the angle that Allah desires and wants goodness for His servants and mercy for His servants and to fulfill their needs, you know, when they when they call upon Him and ask from Him in truthfulness and with truthfulness and with sincerity, when they um, you know, seek when they when they um, when they recourse to him with sincerity. You know, Allah will fulfill their needs without there being anyone else to come and act as a mediator. 
So all of this shows clearly that there is a difference between the creator and the created. And so the mushrikun therefore have made a serious error. They've made an error here in that they have equated between the creator and the creation. And they took interceders, intercessors with Allah just in the same way as intercessors are taken with the kings of this world and the, the leaders. So then, so now we've established the difference between the intercession as it relates between the people, which was the first thing that the Sheikh spoke about, and intercession as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the action of these mushrikun. So as it relates to this type of intercession, then in the Quran we find that the intercession is of two types. One which is negated, Allah negates that intercession and declares it to be false. And the second type of intercession which is affirmed. Which is affirmed. As for the first, the intercession which is negated, then this is the intercession which is requested from other than Allah. Which is requested from other than Allah. This is one, this is one feature of the intercession which is negated. Someone requests intercession from other than Allah. The reason is because a shafa'a belongs solely to Allah. A shafa'a belongs only to Allah. Allah, Allah owns it. Allah, Allah possesses it. And so therefore, it is not to be sought from anyone besides Him. Not to be sought from anyone besides Him. This is one aspect of the type of intercession which is prohibited. So meaning, it's not permissible for anyone to ask for intercession from anyone. Rather, we ask Allah for to, you know, to grant us intercession and to grant us the intercession of those who are allowed to intercede. A second aspect of the intercession which is negated by Allah is interceding for someone interceding for someone for whom that intercession will not be accepted, for whom Allah will not accept that intercession. And this is of course the kafir and the mushrik, the kafir and the mushrik. The intercession will not be accepted for such people. So to intercede for the likes of such people is, is again a characteristic of the type of shafa which is negated in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ There is no close intimate friendship, a friend, or nor any interceder or intercessor for the wrongdoers. And Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ, لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ. And have fear of the, fear the day in which one soul will not avail another soul of anything, and nor will it be accept, nor will any intercession be accepted from it. So this shows. Um, this shows that there's a type of intercession spoken of in the Quran which is negated and it is that which 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 basically has any of these two characteristics that basically it's made without permission it's sought without permission or it asks without, without sorry it's sought from other than Allah intercession cannot be sought from other than Allah and or it's sought for someone with whom Allah is not pleased with with whom Allah will not accept and this is the kafir and the mushrik as for the intercession which is affirmed then this intercession is the one which uh, has two conditions fulfilled. The first one is that it's actually sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin with. It's actually sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, that it is in relation to someone for whom that intercession will in fact be accepted. And this of course is none other than, than the mu'min muwahid, the believer the person upon Tawheed, the believer, who has with him some affairs of sin, he has some affairs of disobedience which are obviously lesser than the level of shirk. So, so with respect to such a person, then intercession will be accepted for him by Allah's permission. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, مَنْ ذَلَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Who is there who will intercede, who is there who can intercede with him, except by his permission. There's the first condition. In this ayah is the first condition. That it is only sought from Allah. It only sought from Allah. Second condition is found in another verse. وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنِرْتَدَى إِلَّا لِمَنِرْتَدَى 
and they do not they, they do not intercede except for the one with whom he is pleased meaning the one with whom Allah is pleased and that is no other than the people of Iman the people of Tawheed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so there's the two conditions and then we can find the two conditions in another set of verses Allah says in another ayah وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلَكٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لَا تُغْنِي شَفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا مِنْ, ب... إلا من بَعْدِ أَنْ يَعْذَنَ اللَّهِ there are many angels in the heavens who, whose intercession will avail nothing except after Allah has granted permission. Right? So there's the first condition that Allah, only Allah has asked and Allah, Allah grants permission. And the second, well, immediately after this verse, it continues, وَيَرْضَى إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ يَعْذَنَ اللَّهِ وَيَرْضَى Except after Allah has granted, granted permission and is pleased. وَيَرْضَى so meaning that Allah is pleased with the one for whom that intercession is made. So again, we see the two, the same two conditions established in another in another set of verses. So this then is the affirmed intercession. So we can see clearly that in the Quran, intercession in its entirety is not negated, and nor is it in its entirety affirmed. Rather, there is one type of intercession which, if it has certain features, it will be rejected, and another type which, if it fulfills certain conditions, it will be accepted and we can clearly see that from what has proceeded as for the shafa'a so this this clearly then is the established shafa'a which is affirmed and when we look in the quran and the sunnah we find that this type of shafa'a is of six types there are six types of this particular shafa'a and the shaykh goes on to explain the, sh the, the all six as for the first it is called a shafa'atul udma Ashafa'atul Udma, which is the greatest or the greater intercession. And this is, this is in fact Al Maqamul Mahmud, this is the lofty position and status that will be granted to the Messenger. And this is as it relates to the people who are waiting on the plains of the Day of Judgment, waiting for the judgment to begin. And what will happen is um, they will. Um, seek this intercession, hoping for this terror to be removed, and you know this 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 waiting to be removed, and for them you know and so the, so they will initially go to Adam al Islam and then to various other prophets one by one they will go to the prophets, and all of these prophets will excuse themselves up until they come to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he will say, ana laha ana laha meaning that I it, it is for me it is for me, meaning this intercession, then. The Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he will uh, prostrate, worshipping Allah between, in, you know, in front of Allah the Mighty Majestic. And Allah will inspire and teach him, Allah will inspire to him certain types of praises. And you know, he, will, he will remain in that way and Allah will, uh, Allah will inspire him with certain praises. And the Messenger will remain in that way, prostrating up until Allah says, O oh Muhammad, raise your head, ask and you shall be given intercede and your intercession will be accepted and this is if you look this this is if you look at this action if you look in in, in this hadith you can see how the prophet والسلام, he didn't actually intercede before actually being given permission he never even raised the issue of intercession rather he just worshipped Allah and praised Allah and he was granted the, the permission to make intercession right so he only interceded after being granted permission, he never made the permission first. So that's one, one of the, the points that you need to understand from this hadith. That even the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't initiate intercession. Rather, he only did it un, until after he was given permission. Right? So that's an important benefit from this, from this hadith. After he was prostrating to Allah and so on and so forth. And then it was said to him, uh, intercede and your intercession will be accepted. So then he interceded. Then he intercedes for the people who are standing there, and then their, their reckoning will begin. And then uh, they will obviously the people will then depart from that place either to paradise or to hellfire. So this is what is called a shafa'atul ulma, and it is also al maqamul mahmud, the lofty position as it relates to the messenger Ali Sallam. This is something Allah mentioned in, mentioned, mentioned in the Quran: Asa an yabathaka rabbuka maqamam maqamam mahmuda that perhaps your Lord will raise you upon a lofty position or a lofty status. And um, this is because, as the Sheikh says, uh, 
the 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 the, the as the Sheikh says that all of the people from the first to the last that they will praise him, meaning the um, the messenger Ali Salam, on account of this lofty position, and uh, yeah, so all of all, so the Sheikh says that all of them will be asking the Prophet peace be upon him that he calls upon Allah in order to you know remove them from this terrifying ordeal that they are in whilst waiting for the judgment to begin, and. So this is the first type of shifa'atul uzma. The second type is the intercession of the Prophet وسلم, for the people of paradise, that they enter paradise. Those who have been designated paradise, that they actually be allowed to enter paradise. Third type of intercession is his intercession for some of the people of paradise, that their ranks are raised more than what they actually are. The fourth, fourth type of intercession is his intercession, intercession for his uncle Abu Talib, and this is because Abu Talib was uh, a, a, a man who took many positions by the side of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he aided him and he supported him and gave him sanctuary against his people and all of this is known and that Abu Talib he had patience along with the messenger Ali Salatu Salam you know upon the various harms that came to him and likewise when they were besieged and likewise when they were like you know uh, under extreme hardships so he sacrificed a great deal with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam of giving him aid and defending him and protection and in reality this is allah allah in fact used abu talib allah subjugated abu talib and used him you know he used this kafir abu talib a uh, non muslim for the protection of the prophet peace be upon him he used a non muslim right to give all of this aid and protection to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu was very eager to guide him and for him to enter into Islam up until he even visited, visited him whilst he was you know close to death and he said uncle you know say la ilaha illallah just a single word on account of which I will be able to argue in your favor with Allah and however there was a group of kuffar mushrikeen with him present with him and they said are you seeking a way other than the way of abdul muttalib you know are you seeking to depart from the way of abdul muttalib and so what happened was this tribesmanship and this you know this um this you know this this kind of uh feeling of the days of ignorance of loyalty to one's tribe and one's whatever you know one's tribe this kind of overtook him and so he, 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 you know, he remained upon the Millah of Abdul Muttalib and he died. He didn't say La ilaha illallah and so therefore he became from the people of the fire. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he then uh, intercedes, will intercede for him in order to lighten the fire or in, to lighten the punishment for him on the Day of Judgment, not for actually removing him from the fire. Right? So this intercession is only to lighten the punishment, punishment not to actually remove the punishment. And for this reason, there's no contradiction, there's no seeming contradiction, there's no contradiction in the verse that we read when Allah says, فَمَا تَنْفَعُهُمْ شَفَاعَةُ shafi'een." Allah says that the intercession of the interceders will not benefit them. Right? The, the, this, this verse isn't a contradiction because you might say, well, how come Abu Talib can benefit from the intercession of the Prophet wasallam? The answer is that this benefit here isn't for Abu, Ta- Abu Talib for being removed from the fire, it's only for his punishment to be lightened in the fire. And so therefore, um, the, you know, in reality, he hasn't benefited in, 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 in the true and the real manner, which is him being removed from the fire. So there's no contradiction between this ayah and between this issue of Abu, Abu Talib. The fifth type of intercession is the shifa'a of anyone, for the one who deserves to enter hellfire, meaning from the people of Tawheed, that he or she not enter the hellfire. Right? So anyone who is deserving of entering the fire, that he or she not enter the hellfire. And the sixth intercession is for the one who entered the fire from the people of Tawheed, that he be removed from the fire. And these last two types of intercession, the final two types of intercession, they are in fact not specific to the Prophet 
they are general for the prophets and for the awliya and for the righteous people and for the afrat afrat meaning the the, the the young children, the small young children who will intercede for their for their parents, um, and for their you know for their ancestors for their for their parents and, and and so on and so forth. So these categories of people will be able to intercede in the last two types that have just been mentioned. Whereas all of the others are unique and specific to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this shafa then that's been mentioned here so far as it's been described, the shafa with its two conditions. That Allah grants permission, it's sought only from Allah, and it's only for the one with whom Allah is pleased with. And likewise, these six types of intercession that we've mentioned, then this is what, it, what is affirmed by Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and what is found, and, and on the basis of what is found in the Ahadith, which are authentic. And this intercession is opposed by some of the innovators, like the Mu'tazila, and like the Khawarij, because they say, on the basis of their belief that a person who commits a sin, he's, 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 he's a disbeliever, they say that he will enter into hellfire and will not exit therefrom. You know, therefrom. So on that basis, they oppose the authentic hadith, which have been rated from the Prophet wasallam, and you know, all of these types of intercession that we mentioned here, and you know, which, 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 which fulfill the conditions that we mentioned earlier on. So the Shaykh then says this issue of Shifa'a is a very great and mighty affair because many people have erred with respect to it both in ancient times and in contemporary times and they've understood it in a way other than what it was intended. And we find that the majority of the Mushrikeen, if not all of the Mushrikeen, all of them have understood intercession in other than uh, it should be desired. And some of the innovate so that's on the one hand, and yet some of the innovators from amongst the Muslimin, they've actually rejected some of the affairs of inter, in, in, intercession. So therefore we can see that from two angles an error has occurred and so therefore it's necessary that we make tafsil, we make clarification and al-idah and again to uh, uh, clarify the issue of shifa'a because it's become a place in which people slip and people err. It's obligatory upon the students of knowledge that they, uh, that they are concerned with this affair because there are many errors uh, with amongst the grave worshippers and the deviants uh, because they don't understand the true meaning of shifa'a or these people they deliberately show opposition and stubborn obstinacy and they persist upon that which their forefathers were upon their ancestors their grandfathers their forefathers their mashayikh their their, their, their sheikhs who were upon misguidance in 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 this issue so to summarize shifa'a Intercession isn't negated absolutely, nor is it affirmed absolutely, rather there is a, a, a detail to be made. Intercession has conditions which must be fulfilled, and um, you know this shafa'a is something that needs to be clarified. It must be understood and known, and for this reason, the author, Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, it's for this reason that he uh, mentioned a chapter in the Book of Tawheed for this specific aim and for this spe- specific purpose. And then the author, Rahimahullah, he quoted some verses and likewise some hadith on the chapter of intercession. And inshallah ta'ala, we will go into them in the next lesson. So that's the end of today's lesson. And we'll continue with the next part of this lesson, inshallah ta'ala, in, in the next lesson.